Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and I'm going to back up a little bit on rocks. The obsolete stuff I think was getting a little bit too complicated and out of hand to do the way I wanted it to be done. And that started to also make me think maybe I'm being like, too aggressive with the diagnostics. So one thing I, I started realizing is I just made a simple class library project here where I have an interface that has obsolete members and a class that has obsolete. And I haven't done this all the way through, but notice that in the I have obsolete case, even if this is true, you can still implement it, which I don't know, like I was like, okay, that's actually surprising. I didn't know that that was the way things work, but apparently that's okay. Okay. Now, of course, if you do something like this, even if you don't call that, you still have to put, I believe, yes, it will put the obsolete attribute on it. Okay. So, because you're overriding it. Now, if you had an abstract class, I think that's a different case. So if you have like abstract, abstract, have obsolete members, and then you have that, and then we try to do a, let's say, public class implement abstract have obsolete. Okay, we'll do abstract have obsolete, and of course you have to. I uh, okay. I, wait a minute, I'm not defining this right. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> these gotta be abstract. That would help. Abstract, and then do this. Okay, so now we'll come up here, and we'll say you've got to implement the abstract class. And same thing here. Okay, so we'd have to do what we're doing here. Even if we, <clears throat> excuse me, don't call the base, or we do, it doesn't matter. In this case, we wouldn't call the base, but we would just do that, and then that's okay. So the point of all this is, is that I think there are cases that we can just handle by putting the obsolete attribute on the thing that we're overriding rather than flagging it and saying, no, you can't do that. Now, if the type itself is obsolete, I think we can do the same thing. We can put it on the type itself. And like I say, if I have like, public, well, I'll, I'll do that later. Uh, I'll have to handle that case and see what happens then. But the point of all this work is I think I'm overanalyzing it and there's probably a, a better way to handle obsoletes. Moreover, if there is a case where, and this is where I'm starting to lean to the person at Microsoft said, just generate the code, is... <laughs> to try to handle all the cases of determining whether something is actually obsolete and suppressed it, cause it can be, do I have that file here? Hold on. Okay. I didn't want to switch to the branch. I, for some reason I thought doing it on the website would be quicker. Maybe it wasn't, but the point is there's all these cases that no warns and if it's disabled and then if you have it as a suppressed message, but maybe it's on the type, and then what about pragmas? And then what about being in the editor config? It's like, oof, I'd have to basically redo what the compiler does in a sense. I'd have to basically figure out how do I handle all these different cases and make sure that that specific attribute or that specific diagnostic is suppressed. So I'm gonna come back to this later in a future episode because I, I don't think I need to do as much with Handling this as an error. There are some things like if you give rocks a sealed type, it simp there's nothing you can do. You can't over you can't suppress that because you're trying to implement then a, you're trying to create a class that is trying to inherit from something that's sealed, and that's that's just not allowed according to C sharp rules. So in that case, it's one of those things of yeah, I'm going to put in a, a diagnostic around that case, but for something like Obsolete. I don't think I need to do as much as what I'm doing. I probably don't even need to have as many errors or diagnostics as I'm creating. And then if something does show up in the file, 
people can say suppress it and then they can say put it in a global suppressions file and global suppressions files you can have suppress message attribute point to a specific member to say suppress it in this case now you're going to say well that's generated code what what happens if that doesn't exist i'm almost convinced that if you have a suppress message attribute that specifies a member location not a location but a member and it can't find it i'm not well you know what let's just try that quick yeah i'm, I'm getting totally distracted this morning let's say i believe you have to do it above the namespace so you have to say like assembly suppress message yep that one and then just say usage it doesn't matter we'll say ca1804 i don't know but what we want to have is target is equal to and let's just say it's fully qualified path that represents the code analysis target i don't think this means like a file i think it means um let's say foo dot bar okay now in this case you're actually seeing it's an ide issue okay invalid or missing target for suppression so even if this came up as like rocks generated something and then you said oh wait a minute i don't want it to do that and i'm going to suppress it and then maybe that member goes away or you don't do that type as a mock anymore then you could just simply go back in here and remove it yeah, so at the, the point is using more of the mechanisms that are already in place for C-sharp to handle these cases, especially with obsolete members, is probably the right way to go. So I should put a message back in that form. And once I get back to this, and if it all works the way I think I can get it to work, say to him, yep, you're right. There wasn't a reason to do that in that case. So, but the point is there's still some things I need to handle as diagnostics. Now, that led me to realize I don't think I'm putting the diagnostics in the wrong, in the right place. For example, if I come up to, let's say, cannot mock seal type diagnostic. Well, what's being passed in? A type symbol. And we're getting the location there. All of these, when I was looking through them, are not taking the invocation expression syntax node that's the location like when i call rock.create and then you pass in the type in the generic that's the thing that we should be putting the error on sure maybe like in the case of obsolete it's an obsolete member and a type but that's not we that might be in a, a assembly or a package that we don't have control of it's just a binary we don't have code to point to so then i'm like that doesn't really make any sense and i think that was something when the guy that I work with found this whole original issue with Rock 10 and obsolete stuff. It wasn't pointing to anything, and it's because it was in a different assembly. So that's made me start to realize with all of these, I think I need to have them get the invocation expression and then use that for the location here. And that should have a location in all cases. Now, of course, this is going to break some of my tests because the locations that I'm actually emitting aren't going to be correct. They're going to be on the invocation, but I think that's the right thing to do. Okay. So I already got a branch in place. We're going to change all these on the diagnostics to get the invocation and then just trickle up and see what's calling it and, and work, work our way up to the top to actually getting to the point where we are passing in the invocation expression. I believe all of these diagnostics are created when I'm doing the mock model at some point. Once you actually get past that point, then the code analysis, not the code analysis, the code generation will kick in if you actually generated a valid model. There's no diagnostics. And that's also a side note of why I think using the approach of just let the the the, the code analysis, well, how do I want to say this? Just let the stuff kick in for obsolete members the way it does and not try to handle it specifically as special cases in rocks. Uh, that, that also doesn't break stuff too much in terms of what I'm trying to do in code generation because I don't have to handle that rock 10 or other ones specifically. Okay, so let's get to this. All right. So we want to have invocation expression syntax invocation and that's what we're going to use all over the place for these things okay so 
here we want to say invocation location, I believe. Yeah, get location. And we don't have to do any of this stuff anymore. Okay, because it, it should have a location. Okay, so that's cool. So we're just going to go through all these now, even the ones that I think I'm probably going to get rid of at some point. And we're just going to change all these to invocation, get location. And hopefully at some point, IntelliCode will kick in and go, ah, yes, this is what you're trying to do. And I will do this all for you. Yep. Boom. Third time's a charm. I think it, it waits for you to do two things that are the same. And then it goes, ah, yes, you've, well, in this case, it didn't pick that up. That's okay. So just prove me wrong. <laughs> it's listening. It knows what I wanted to do there. Okay. So we'll keep going. When I'm recording this, it is near the end of October. Oh, you don't know what that is. Wow, you should. And I did a whole bunch of leaf gathering yesterday. And that was awesome. I just want to make sure that I had the using statement here. And that was oh so much fun. I still got to cut the grass today, get that to pick up the rest of the stuff. Now that's disappointing. It should know that's like, hey, I want that. But the fact that it's doing all these other things for me, except here it doesn't, and then it does. It's like, why, why is it not smart enough to do it in some places, but not others? It's just weird, you know? We're getting near the, the point in the season where the snow may be a coming and <laughs> Got to get as much done on the, the lawn before that happens. Okay. And then you do that. But you don't. Oh, you you do. Okay, good. It's weird. Like, what, what I'm trying to figure out the rules that it's trying to do to pick these up. And it's not obvious as to when it goes, oh, yes, that's what you want to do. I can see it here. And then it goes, yeah, you want that. But then... You don't, like it should do that extra step to go, well, when you did that edit, what should we change then? Okay, one more. And we'll get this done. The, the funny thing is, is I remember when I first saw IntelliSense in Visual Basic, and I was like, that was a game changer. That was amazing because you could hit a dot and it would tell you all the things you could do there. And that was such a time saver. And now we have so many other cool tools that we can use so that the coding experience is even that much quicker. Even simple edits like that or having it generate code for us. I'm still, I probably said this before, and I'm, I'm not trying to get on a rant here, but when I hear people being, who constantly talk about AI infused tools, I want to just, puke. I am so tired of hearing that. And it's not that things like LLMs and, and tools like Go, Copilot and whatnot, they're very, very cool. But I don't I don't think they should be called AI. And and I'm getting tired of hearing people qualify it that way. In any event, we're gonna have some compiler errors here. So if I say build, we don't want to build solution. Yes, that's what we want. Okay. So let's let it build and then tell us all the places where it doesn't have the invocation. Yes, you failed. Where did you fail? Only five errors, only 20 errors. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you at all. Let's, yeah, we just wanna see the ones for rocks. I cannot believe, wait, this can be simplified? Really? We're gonna be simplified. I'm, I'm getting distracted. What is simplify conditional expression? Self is not named so or names. I no. I, I don't. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just. Let's just stick to the issues at hand. Okay. 
Yes, you don't know what that is. So I think with most of these, they're going to be in here. And it's because we don't have the invocation expression here. So if we say invocation, well, I've got that copied. There you go. And let's bring that down here. And then we can just say invocation. Expr Why? I mean, that's what I called. No, I called it invocation. That's right. Okay, and then we're just gonna blast all these in here because it's gonna, it's gonna, it should know now. Yeah, all these in this document. There we go. One and done. Boom. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Well. Oh, that's right. Because while we're doing things, we don't necessarily see them. So. Invocation expression. If if that made sense of what I just babbled out of my my mouth. I don't think it did. Okay. Yep. So that's those. Yeah, now you're trying to call that. But we should have invocation. Yes, we do. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. It's here. Yep. Okay. And then we do this one, and I bet it's going to be very much the same thing. Yep. Nope. Invocation expression. I'd laugh if I had the actual wrong. <laughs> you know, I actually should look at that. I'm almost positive what we do in Rock Create. And this also has to be done in Rock. Well, it would. It would have been done in Rock Make because we're just doing the diagnostics or if there were any there or what it came up. An invocation expression said, yes, we are. <laughs> of course. Of course we are. Okay. So what's next? Node. Right? Yep. Boom. Saw that. There's a guy at work who's also doing some stuff with Node 18, the, the JavaScript framework, and upgrading an old project to being usable in 18. I think that's a version he's targeting. And there's just like hundreds of linting and other issues that he's been for like the last year not no not the last year the, the last couple of days just bumping that and i remember the first time i added code analysis to a project like in 2007 or something and we were just spent we basically spent a whole week just removing issues removing errors removing issues and and once you finally get to that done point it's like you actually, I, I felt like we had more confidence because I felt like we actually had the ability to go, ah, yes, we, we now know our code is is stronger and better. But it's that if you don't stay with it and if you don't enable this and, and keep up with it, it, it can become kind of a burden, you know. Okay, so we want to say here, invocation, right? And we want to say that here, okay. So we're, we're, we're breaking it down. We're getting there. So member can be married. Me. Oh, shut up. I'm getting too distracted. So we need that here as well. Okay. That's all right. Invo invocation expression syntax. Invocation. Thank you. We'll do that. And we'll put that right in here. All right. So now that means... Yes. And correct. Are there any more errors? Well, errors in... Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I just realized something with my tests. It's always... Because I have tests that actually just do it with the... That, that just create the actual diagnostic. For example, if I do this one, all I'm doing is giving it a symbol. I, I don't have an invocation here to report it on. So yeah, that's gonna be fun to fix those. Okay, but first things first, let's let's say build build rocks. Can we at least build that now? Nope. Why can't we build that? Oh, we still got a couple left. Okay. 
So we want to say here node, right? And then we want to have one more. Where is this one? Um, type mock model. We should say invocation expression syntax invocation. And then we can pass it in here for anybody that needs it. There we go. Now that's going to break something that's using type mock model, right? Right. Should. Because we weren't passing that in before. Yes. And what is that? Invocation. There we go. Easy. Hit the easy button. That's easy, right? And we succeeded. Okay, I'm going to stop here with the episode because the next one, I'm definitely going to need to go into the test assembly and fix all the things that aren't being passed in, figure out how I'm going to do that. But then also the integration tests and the cogeneration tests, I think, shouldn't have any issues. But we'll do that in the next episode, try to fix up all the tests, and then we'll move on from there. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.